The D-glucose carbohydrate is the most abundant aldohexose because it's the most stable. Now we know there are two types of anomers for the D-glucose. The question is which one of those anomers is the more abundant one, which one is the more stable one and why? So basically we want to examine the three-dimensional structure of the alpha anomer and the beta anomer of D-glucose and we want to compare the two and see which one is more stable and why. So let's begin with the beta anomer of D-glucose. So let's draw the whole worth three-dimensional structure. So basically it looks something like this. So we have in the back these guys in the front we have these so these are basically coming out of the board and we have our primary alcohol group here pointing upward the H will point downward here the H points up the OH points down here the OH points up the H points down OH points down H points up and let's say we're dealing with the beta anomer of D-glucose <clears throat> that implies that our OH points up the H will point downward so this is our beta D-glucopyranose and this is the Haworth form of this molecule. So this way of drawing our glucose molecule is given this name here, the Haworth. Now to actually see what the stability of this molecule is and to compare the stability of the beta and the alpha, we have to draw the chair conformation of this molecule. And the way that we draw the chair conformation is by pulling carbon number one downward and carbon number four upward. So basically this is carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, carbon five, and carbon six. So we pull on carbon one, we pull it downward. We pull on car a carbon four, we pull that up <coughs> upward. And so we basically produce the following chair conformation. So we have, well, let's draw it at a slight angle. So we have a slight angle here. Th this will go downward, this will go upward. And so let's extend this just a f little bit further. There you go. And there you go. Okay. So this is our chair confirmation. Now, this is basically carbon number one that we pull downward. This is carbon number two that we pull upward. So this is, or I'm sorry, this is carbon number four. So this is carbon number five. Carbon number six will be here. This is two and this is three. So now we want to basically draw the orientations of the larger hydroxyl groups on this chair conformation of the beta d glucopyranose. So let's begin with carbon number one. In the Haworth form, carbon number one contains our hydroxyl group that points upward. And so on carbon number one, the hydroxyl group here in the chair conformation will also point upward. And the, up, and the upward direction here is equatorial. So that means it will point along this direction here. And our axile is going downward, so the H basically points downward. Now, on carbon number two, the hydroxyl now points downward, and the downward direction on carbon two is along our axile, so this is our OH. Now, on carbon number three, the hydroxyl points upward, and the upward direction on carbon three of this cyclohexane is along the equatorial, so it points like so. On carbon 4, the hydroxyl points downward and the downward direction on carbon 4 on the chair conformation is the axile. And finally, on carbon 5, our entire primary alcohol group here basically points upward. And along this direction, the upward direction is once again along our equatorial. 
So this is the orientation of all the groups for the, uh, for the chair confirmation of beta D glycopyranase. So this is our beta D glucopyranase or pyranose. And this is the chair conformation. Now there are two chair conformations. This is the more stable one. So now to basically determine if this or the alpha one is more stable, we have to draw the same one, but for the alpha case. So the only difference between the alpha and the beta D glucopyranose is the orientation of this group here. So for the alpha case, the hydroxyl group will point downwards. So basically we have to redraw this molecule, but now we take that group, the hydroxyl group on carbon number one, and we point it downwards instead of upwards and everything else basically remains unchanged. We have an H here, an H here, an OH here. The OH goes up, H goes down, H goes up, OH goes down, and now the OH here also goes down. And so this is the alpha D glucopyranose. And this is once again, the Holworth form. Now we don't want to look at this one, we want to look at the chair conformation of this version. And it basically looks exactly like this, except the orientation of carbon one is reversed. So basically let's draw our molecule. So we have at an angle, we have slight angle here. So we have our bond here. Um, this will form this bond here. So we have our, okay? And now we basically repeat the same structure as here, except now this points downward instead of upward. So on carbon number one, so this is carbon number one, we pull down. This one is carbon number four, we pull upward. And so on carbon number one, the hydroxyl points downward, and here the downward direction is axile. So our OH points along the axile, and everywhere else it's exactly the same. So our OH points equatorially here, OH points equatorially here, equatorially here. This also points along the equatorial position. We have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then the H's we didn't uh, bother drawing. So the question is, this is our alpha D glucopyranose, and this is our more stable chair conformation The question is, which one is more stable, the beta or the alpha version? So remember, when the larger groups are found along the equatorial position, that creates a more stable conformation. On the alpha case, we have four of these groups. So one, two, three, four, that point along the equatorial and one point along the axile. For the beta case, all of these large groups point along the equatorial position as far away from one another as possible. So we have less steric hindrance and that means this will be the more stable anomer of D-glucose. So beta D-glucopyranose is the predominant one because it is more stable. All the groups are pointing along the equatorial position compared to this one which contains one hydroxyl group on this anomeric carbon that points in the axile direction.